Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Scrollies. If you don't recognize my voice, I'm going to let you know right now that I am Ratnado of twitch.tv slash teamratnado. Come check me out. Come follow me. We'll hang out. And of course, I'm here with the face of Scrollies, the one who makes the connections, the man, the monkey. Is me, Squat Cobbler. I'm the monkey. <laughs> That's Squat Cobbler. He loves monkey. He loves Donkey Kong. And frankly, he deserves a new Nintendo game. If you're listening, Nintendo. Give me monkey. Give me 3D monkey even. Please, I'll take I'll take any monkey. Just don't leave me with only the Mario and Rabbids DLC. That's not the only monkey I can have on Switch that's new. <laughs> He loves Monkey so much, he's even going with, I believe, the Game Boy Advance version, played by shout out Mooncat Gab. Shout out Mooncat Gab, playing through DKC2 on GBA, assuming she hasn't rage quit at this point. <laughs> and how old is that game, Nintendo? Squat, do you know? I know exactly how old it is because I got it for Christmas the year that it came out. I even have a video of it. Uh, 2004 is when that Game Boy Advance remake came out. The original game came out in 1995, one year after the DK Revolution. Oh my goodness. Look, we're drip feeding him Donkey Kong content, Nintendo. Do something. Get this boy some more Donkey Kong content. You remember a time when a, a series could just drop sequel after sequel year by year? Now we're lucky if we get a, a, a new game in a franchise a decade. Oh my goodness. Ah, uh, yeah. K kind of the worst thing. And they were reliable. They were good games. They may not be as pretty as they are now, but they were amazing. I don't know if they were all good. It might be talking a little qu uh, quantity over quality, but nonetheless, waiting's hard, guys. We're impatient. I guess I've got a specific game in mind that came out around the same time as the game that you're talking about. Ooh. We're going to get into that, though. First, Squat Cobbler, what have you been playing? Ah, well, I've been playing a little game. Actually, I mean, picked back up a little game that I was playing a long time ago and dropped uh, Ace Attorney, specifically the second one, Ace Attorney Justice for All. Objection! Um, shout out Save Data Team, uh, who's been playing <laughs> through that whole series, as well as Proc Ion Lotor, who just started the first one uh, upon my request um, last week. Yeah, uh, hopefully he hasn't rage quit at this point either. <laughs> oh, wow, I... Didn't know that. That shows you how much I've been on Twitch recently. Yeah, good old, good old, good old Proc. He's uh, he, he's feeling out the world of Ace Attorney, uh, the kangaroo court that exists in there, and the the defiance of all of all legal practices that a uh, sports game guy would would shake his head at. Oh, definitely. Maybe I rip off Save Data Team with Sports Game Guy, and I play Ace Attorney with an actual lawyer. Oh boy. Oh boy, I, I can I can smell the lawsuit already. <laughs> we are dealing with actual lawyers here. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's awesome. What do you enjoy about it? What's what's going? What do you like? And what do you? Um, I I, I do like the, how linear they are because I know I know you know for some people are like oh man it's, you know I can't really like control the story or anything. It's the that's the point. It's a visual novel, and yet you know it's funny. Uh, it's charming. It's got it's got crazy characters. It's really like wacky and supernatural too. Which is mm. not really what you expect in your in your courtroom drama, quote unquote. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's got a lot of personality to it. Um, I've only played the first game in full. Um, the second game is leaning a little more heavily into that, so it might reach a point where I'm just like, ah, this is too much. But for now, for now, it's just right that I'm I'm, I'm digging it. Yeah, that's awesome. You're influencing everybody right now. You got Proc to play it um, during Rackon. You talked me into getting. Uh, I don't know what the collection is. Uh, the, the trilogy, I believe. And I, that's also what I picked up and why I've been playing it, because I, I saw it was on sale when you got it. Yeah. Um, I played the DS version of the first one, and now I'm playing the, the HD um, version of the second one. Yeah, they're, they're really interesting games. Definitely a blind spot in my gaming history. Um, I've always wanted to get into them, so what better time? And at the same time also, and really quick, you, you talked me also to play mario rabbids kingdom Ooh, battle the 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 squat cobbler uh approved xcom <laughs> yes exactly uh you really did make me buy stuff that day you guys he had a uh, peanut popper to my head he said buy it now play it later finger on the trigger i was like you better get the cutesy version or else <laughs> <laughs> he, he asked me should i get regular xcom too i said no even though i have that now and it's pretty good <laughs> <laughs> just Mario and Mario Rabbids. 
I think I said that uh, XCOM 2 just went for free on Epic not too long ago, so uh, you should probably get it on a different platform than the Switch. <laughs> Definitely. And it's also like 17 gigabytes. Like, mm. Oh, it's huge. Yeah, it's huge on the Switch. Ah, uh, yeah. Didn't get it there. Probably get it on PlayStation or something. I think I already have it on PlayStation 4? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, um, that's awesome. I'm glad you're playing that game. I'm going to be getting into it. Ace Attorney, really cool series. Absolutely. Ratnado, how about yourself? Uh, ha- have you been playing much since you uh, returned to uh, your-, your desert? Oh, my Lord. Um, yeah, I've been playing a game. I'm actually really addicted to it. And not just because I'm trying to, you know, pay penitence to Jarius, to Zora for making them angry. Uh, because it's also a really good game. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Oh, no. he's <laughs> He's been bit. He's been bit by Nomura, the bug. <laughs> uh, no, of course, I'm talking about uh, Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory, which... Oh my gosh. He's, he's, he's totally flipped from no, Nomura to Yes Mora. <laughs> yes Mora. Just because I saw somebody, you know, like walking around my house with a keyblade. I don't know. Mm. It kind of looked like... I'm not going to say it was Jiraiya's. But it could have been Jarius. And, uh, you know, now I'm out here singing the praises. I I, I, I love Nomura. Uh, he, he's the best. Uh, oh, why do you keep, why, why, why do you can't keep glancing to your side? What, what's uh, over no there? Reason. No, no reason, squad. No reason. <laughs> uh, Kingdom Hearts, it's the best. Are you, are you wearing clown shoes right now? <laughs> they zip up. I'm looking for somebody. Have any of you seen a guy with spiky hair? <laughs> Spikier. Uh, okay, well, well, I'll just leave that be. Uh. No, but seriously, Melody Memory is pretty good. I mentioned a couple weeks ago that I was playing Final Fantasy Theatrhythm, and this is kind of just like a grown-up version of that for the Switch, which is for adults, of course, and not babies. Naturally, naturally. Well, Ratna- is all about the, the Square Rhythm games right now, it seems. Yeah, I'm really into it. And it's just like they took a lot of stuff that was kind of annoying about it in Theatrhythm and they fixed it. So not a lot of access to every song at the start, but there is like an actual kind of story to it. It follows the games and there are tons of levels. There are so many songs. It's on sale right now. If you're interested in rhythm games or Kingdom Hearts, I highly recommend it. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Well, you know what song it does give you access to from the start in a totally different game? What song is that, Squat? It's dearly beloved swing version in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, which <laughs> is totally locked behind having save data of Melody of Memory on your Switch. <laughs> you cannot get that song otherwise in the game. Yeah, after you told me that, I think I when I checked it yesterday, and sure enough, it's in there now. Yep, yep. Thank, th- thanks, uh, Nintendo. Thanks for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, it's been fun. I'm going to keep playing it. I'll probably play it on stream a little here and there. Like Not as like, I have to finish this game, but just like, I don't know, I'll play a song or two here and there. All right, all right. Well, uh, this this might transition uh, somewhat nicely, a little bumpy, but uh, Disney, you know, Kingdom Hearts, uh, Disney also owns another property now, uh, ha- have for a little while, but we're going to be talking about something today in the Star Wars universe. Uh, the the, the quote unquote non canon one now. Uh, what do they call it? Legends? Legends. Yeah, Star Wars Legends. It's it's an old game. It's an older code, sir, but it checks out. Ratnado has a lot of experience with it. Uh, I, I I do not, but I'm looking forward to hearing more about it. We talked about this a little bit on our uh, multiplayer episode with Cinnamon Toast a while back. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get into it. I'll let Ratnado introduce it. Princess Leia is the best Disney princess by far. Agreed. <laughs> uh, Star Wars Galaxies. Yeah, this is a game that I could talk on end about for days. If Seriously, I could probably talk about this for hours. I'll try and cut it down for you all. This podcast you're listening to was edited down from a three-hour recording, everyone, just so you know. <laughs> and, and rightfully so. You know, I'm talking about a lot of stuff that doesn't matter. But Star Wars Galaxies MMO, if any of you have played it, please find me on Discord and message me because... I'm trying to find new people to play with. Trying to, trying to get back into it. Dust off the old blaster. Dust off the old blaster. There's a bunch of emulators. I specifically played at the very start. I had the collector's edition in 2003. Ooh. 
This was this was before DKC2 came to GBA a long time ago. That was going to be the transition before of like, oh, 2004? Well, let me go one year further behind. Um, Squat, you famously don't play MMOs. Eh, not too often. They, they just feel like an endless grind forever and ever. And uh, yeah, that just doesn't really do it for me. I think it's just grinding in games. The second that it expects me to grind, I, I uh, turn my nose and, and, and quickly look for a way out. My, my escape patch. <laughs> Understandable. What if I told you, though, that in my experience of Star Wars Galaxies, I don't think I think it took me like a year before I finally, quote unquote, mastered a profession, which is something that you're expected to do. Maybe some of the starter stuff, but my favorite and why Star Wars Galaxies is my favorite is because of all the social interactions that I had, all the people that I met, the things you can do. And that's why I would passionately try to sell anybody on Star Wars Galaxies is because when it first came out, it wasn't just about get a quest, go kill thing, come back, repeat. In a way, sure, because it was an MMO and it was the early 2000s, but there was so much more to it. You could be all kinds of different professions. You could be a melee, you know, like fighting with your fists. You could use a sword, kind of like your typical MMO or like RPG thing, but then you could be all these other things. You could be a pistolier, you could be a bounty hunter, a commando, and they each had unique things that only they could do. These days, in order to make things so simple, there's five or six classes and that's it. And they all kind of mostly do the same thing. But in Star Wars Galaxy Squat Cobbler, you could become a millionaire without ever fighting anything ever. <gasps> so, so you're telling me you could live an entire life in, in a video game with other people? And Whoa. It, it wouldn't feel annoying to grind? And it wouldn't feel annoying to grind. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> well, all right. You're talking to the biggest the biggest grinding cynic there is. So, so you, you've piqued my interest. Please continue. Sometimes I randomly say to Squat, random battles, and he, he rolls his eyes instinctively. Uh, I, 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 I cringe. I, I, I physically start to curl into a ball whenever he says <laughs> random encounters. Ugh, ugh. Doing it right now. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. Star Wars Galaxies. There are there's a whole class of professions that you could do. So let's say you just wanted to be the greatest chef in your galaxy. You could do that. And everything was set up in a specific way so that like um heart like resources were not always in the same place at the same time and they required skills in order to go find. So Hey, I'm Squat Cobbler. I want to be the best chef in the galaxy. I want to like, you know, there was a there was not only like you could build your name up, right? All right. And you could harvest and scout the best resources, the best eggs, the best wheat, all these different things. And you had to like actually use your artisan skills to do it. And at the beginning, it was it was difficult, too, because you had to go like go out into the wild. So you might actually hire somebody to be like, hey, I need an escort. I've got to go to this place. It's really dangerous. You know, I'll give you you know, 5,000 credits to go and help me with that. Right. Um, and, and that was a legitimate way to play. Likewise, you could have been a weaponsmith, an armor smith, all these different things that you make, um, that you can have a name for because you got the best resources. You spent the most money and everything kind of degraded. There was always a reason to buy new stuff. There was always a reason to have like your pocket weaponsmith of like, this guy makes the best deal. 44 blasters. I'm only buying from him. It, it, it was crazy. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if you've ever heard of that in a game before. This is me. This I am. And I chose this life. And I am content. Remarkable. Wow. I, I don't think I've ever really experienced that level of freedom in a multiplayer game before. Uh, Ratnado, tell me a little bit about uh, yourself. What, what line of work did you find yourself in the Star Wars universe? Well, I was a little bit of a journeyman. I did a little bit of everything, much like Cloud. A renaissance man, perhaps. <laughs> a renaissance. I was a mercenary. No, um, I started <laughs> off as, I think, a pistolier smuggler, which is kind of just to say I had a very good base in shooting pistols. Mm, pew, pew. Yeah. What, what was really cool about this about this game, too, is that you could you didn't necessarily have to say, I pick this one thing and I have to follow it forever. You had some number of points and you had a tree of skills, and so you could basically create your own character. If you wanted to be a master pistolier and a master doctor, you had enough points to do that, but that would kind of, you know, tap you out. Right. 
because I was, I didn't play that much. Like I had friends who played for like eight hours every single day and they were constantly mastering things and trying new things. And I was a little much, I would play like, you know, two or three hours every couple days. I'm I'm thinking of the South Park the South Park episode on World of Warcraft, and they they come up against the <laughs> guy who spends his entire life just playing playing that game. And how can you kill that which has no life? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and that's pretty accurate. It wh- that is very accurate. Like I remember my friend Alibera, she played all the time, and she was she was always something new. Every time we hung out together, she'd be like, "Oh, now I'm a master smuggler." Now I'm a master dancer. Now I'm master this, master medic. And it was always different. And it was kind of cool. I mean, I think the the people who played so much eventually got burnt out because they did try everything. I was going to say, keeps it keeps it fresh. But I mean, there's only so many lines of work you can find yourself in, right? Until you start to make up your own, which uh, I think you might you might have some stories about coming up. Oh, my gosh. Yes. It, it, what was so cool is that the game kind of even just like let you. It wasn't so much here are the missions, go do them. That's the game. It was kind of like, I don't know, here's a bunch of stuff you can play with and you can make up your own story. Yeah. Make up stuff. Yeah, a big a big, a big sandbox uh, in the Star Wars universe. Maybe, 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 is Minecraft comparable? A little bit. I mean, they were huge. They were actually huge worlds and you could like build, you know, even by today's standards and even, even by then standards, it wasn't great, but you could like build a city. Ah, you could like like just name something. Name something you think would be fun if you lived in Star Wars. What would you want to do? What I want to do, I would want to be a bounty hunter. And you could do that. I could be a bounty hunter. Oh my gosh, this is actually really cool. You didn't have to just like do NPC quests for bounty hunter, although they did exist. You there there came a point. Oh my gosh. I, okay. I think I've talked a little bit about this with you. <laughs> well, oh please restate it as if I never heard it. <laughs> As if you never heard it. For all the listeners out there. There was a lot of different things. I can't remember exactly how it worked, but uh, Jedi became a thing that people didn't know. Like um, Star Wars Galaxies came out. Sony was in charge of it. And they never said for like a year or whatever it was, they never said this is how to unlock a Jedi. Real? Okay. I would have thought that'd be something they instituted from the start. Like, hey, you know, here's your, here's your like, you know, starter classes. You know, Jedi, bounty hunter, smuggler, yada, yada, yada. But you're telling me Jedi wasn't even on the table for the first year. It Well, it was on the table, but uh, nobody but it was knew a, how. It was a super secret. It was a super secret. Uh, and so, and, and I remember before the game even came out, people were like, well, I'm going to become a Jedi. Like my father before me. <laughs> and yeah, exactly. And people would like say, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to do it. They would try all these different things. And I remember before the game even came out, the actual developers are like, we're going to make it a thing where if your Jedi dies so many times or something like that, or they die at all, they become a blue glowy. Ooh, forever. And, and you're forever. stuck like that. Oh, and you're man. Stuck like that. And so <laughs> it's it, a lot of pressure. <laughs> it, and that's really cool, though. That's what made it so cool. And and nowadays, if they did that, they'd be like, well, you can be a Jedi and that's fine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well they'd have people rage quitting if they if they became a uh, a blue glowy who, who couldn't. uh pvp anymore because we, we all we all know the kind of uh the kind of player that that class attracts <laughs> exactly which kind of is what led to the downfall of star wars galaxies a little bit because mm. a few years on they were trying to cater to those people who are like well i want to play jedi it's not star wars unless you're a jedi right right and uh so the game is set right after episode four so before empire strikes back and so there wouldn't be a lot of jedi no no, there'd be, uh, you know, only as many as, uh, <laughs> There's, what is it? The joke is that uh, Anakin actually did bring balance to the Force because there was a ton of Jedi, but there was only two Sith. So he made their two Jedi, two Sith, perfectly balanced. <laughs> yeah, unless you go to Disney now where... Oh, yeah, every, every, there's, a, there's a Jedi just hiding around every corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Obi- Obi-Wan and Yoda weren't special. They were just the only ones in exile. All the other Jedi were out doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Disney's got to sell lightsabers. You got it. They got to sell all the, all the different colors and all the different hilts. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll finish that all that to explain. There came a point where, like, if you started to use your force powers or were dueling people with your lightsaber, you could actually get bounties for a Jedi or for an actual player. Wow. Player bounties. Man, I, I can't imagine that in today's world. You just have an entire server 
<laughs> just sending would, down on one player and it'd be it'd be no contest <laughs> yeah it, it would just be griefing and <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is kind of what it was it'd just be the oppressors in gta online just descending <laughs> dozens upon <laughs> dozens of them onto one player and claiming that bounty before they have a chance to fight back <laughs> yeah well i do remember and i remember this is one of my i have so many memories that led to one of my best memories but i think i was with my friend outlaw shout out outlaw he he we, he asked us some, one of his friends or something asked us hey i've got a bounty for a jedi they're incognito like you know they're not they don't look like a jedi right now but i've got the bounty or whatever and we went to a cantina in i think naboo in feed and that's mm. where this jedi was hanging out and we were just like typing to each, each other in group chats like all right ratnado you go cover the back outlaw me and you go in first we're gonna we're gonna do this we're gonna shoot him with this we're gonna use stunning this and that and we had to like use special armor because the guy had a lightsaber i, I i'm visualing this right now as your actual characters just like jotting this down on, in like orabash on a napkin and like sliding it to, to the player <laughs> next to them at the bar it's like you you go you go round back we'll flank him <laughs> yeah <exactly. laughs> But it was like those kind of player events that like just like we just the game just facilitated it and we were the ones who played up the the drama of it. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. You, you, you make your own story. And that's uh, that's the appeal, right? As you're playing with your friends and you're you're telling your own. Yeah, exactly. It, and that's seriously like I think, I think I got killed, but we did kill a Jedi. All right. Well, well, you'll split that bounty. Uh, what was it like seven ways? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Y'all, y'all know. made pennies. Yeah, worth it. <laughs> My cut wasn't very big, but it was. It was. A well, lot. you did die, so so right, Lisa. <laughs> Tell me, did you take part in any holiday events of your own making? Oh my lord. Dude, yes, I know I've brought this up before, and it's seriously, again, just like such a cool memory. The, the group I was a part of, it was it was a clan from Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, which I'd mentioned before, and we got together in the Star Wars Galaxies when it came out. There was like a good, I don't know, 15 or 20 of us, of people who I still talk to daily, like now, we still talk, and we were a rebel guild on Radiant. Hmm. And this guy named Genesis eventually invited our leader. He's like, hey, we've got this big city, City of Rage, on Tatooine, which was just a little north of Jabba's Palace. And it, Christmas comes around. We'd all moved in. We'd had, like, a couple places. We tried to live on Naboo. We tried to live on Corellia. And eventually, because we were just, like, a very good guild, we were always working together. We were always online. They invited us. We moved into the city. I remember that the city, like, they were, they had a bunch of stuff going on. They were doing decorations. And then our guild, though, like, I think we had recruited some people from outside of Jedi Knight at that point. And we did a gift exchange. The game had fireworks. Oh, my gosh. You're, you're celebrating Life Day. <laughs> Life Day in, in a game. And I know people out there, you're probably like, this is silly. <laughs> what is this? But that's seriously such a good memory of like, I remember I got, I think I got gems, I think, or no, no, it would have been my friend Hobar. And I think I got him because he was a, I think he was a, a either a bounty hunter or a commando. I got him like really nice blaster. And I was like, hey, happy life day, man. Like, <laughs> this is for you. And geez, like, can you imagine that in a game today? Like, it had nothing to do with combat, had nothing to do with like, well, we've got to get the strongest. I mean, a little bit. It's not about uh, season passes or anything like that. It was just like, hey, we're friends and this is like our avatar into this world. Let's have life day together. A, a microtransactionless gift exchange in a video game. I no, I don't think I can tell you <laughs> that I could imagine this today. Yeah. Now, now, now tell me this. Do you remember what you got for actual Christmas that year? <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because Life Day was so much more monumental. <laughs> Life Day. Wait, wait no, I so. do remember. I got Matrix Reloaded on DVD. Ah, uh, okay, well. <laughs> in retrospect, hey, I appreciate the sentiment. I don't know if that was as good a gift in Star Wars Galaxies, if I'm being yeah, honest. <laughs> here, here, here I was hoping you would have at least gotten a, a Sega Nomad or something. 
Oh, I was praying for that at that point, but I think it was just a little past its prime. A little past its prime, you know, a good good 10 years uh, since the 16-bit arcade revolution began. But Squat Cobbler, I've always talked to people about this, and I know I've talked with Reliant K-Fan about this game because Porter Robinson, who is Reliant K-Fan's god... (laughs) <laughs> his, his deity, his idol? Uh, the great ape is to me as Porter Robinson is to Reliant K fan. <laughs> yeah, uh, Porter Robinson apparently played it and he has like music that was, ins- I mean, not inspired in the sense of like musically, he took stuff from it, but like the idea of these spaces filled with people and how Star Wars Galaxy really felt like just this online world. It, it, it's so different from even the MMOs of today that are just like, oh, we've got to do raids, we've got to do this. Like, it was so social. Squat so Cobbler, like, there were there were medics that you had to go see because you would get wounds that you couldn't just get rid of in the field. I mean, you, if you were a good ranger, you could. But you had to eventually go back to a town, and a medic would have to treat them. You would also have a mind stat, like, uh, that would get wounds, and you would have to go watch a dancer or listen to a musician in the cantina. Wow. Just as part of the mission. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise you're like getting these, you're slowly getting all these negatives onto your stats. Man, that's so mundane. That's so routine. Yeah. I love it. No, really though, because you would like, like I say. That's, like, what, I, that's what I just do in like, in like adventure games anyway. Like Skyrim, I'll just like go and just hang out in the, in the uh, tavern. Like, wow. And, and you actually get credit for that. It's not even just like, oh, you know, we're just doing this for role playing. Like it's, it's part of the game. It's part of the game. And so there were people like, I remember I made a lot of friends. Who was it? I eventually went to another server with some friends that I met at the cantina because, you know, you'd go out and you would do your thing for two, three hours and then you'd have to go to the cantina to rest and you would like make friends there. People who would just be there. It's like, oh, this is their shift. I'm going to go see it. You know, it's a little band. They made themselves a band. It it was crazy. Like, man, our our, our Sea of Thieves uh, trio can't hang. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> plus we only have like you know eight songs we can choose from randomly so <laughs> <laughs> well we did our best and i think star wars galaxies just had such a huge idea of what it wanted to do that's what i always tell people final fantasy 6 is my favorite game but my favorite gaming experience is star wars galaxies oh that's 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 such a nice little time capsule it could never be that way today <laughs> it wouldn't happen the landscape has changed so much i mean imagine just paying like a base price for the game and then getting just infinite amount of content out of it no way yeah. no way it would happen especially well, with star wars now well there is a there was a monthly fee Oh, well, hey, you know, uh, internet's not free, folks. <laughs> yeah, internet's not free. But Oh, wait, no, I he's mean, talking about the game membership. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but but the thing is, though, like, it felt like it was going... So, I mean, there was a lot of issues, too. I, I, people out there, if you know Star Wars Galaxies, I have rose-colored glasses on. <laughs> hey, nostalgia is a hell of a drug. Uh, mm. t- tell me, at what point did things begin to change? Did the wind shift direction? I think they had figured out how to get Jedi and that was you had to master a certain number of professions or th- like three certain professions. And so the game became a grind. Everyone wanted a Jedi. So everybody was trying to do that and it broke the game. It broke the economy because people weren't like, well, I don't, I don't want to just be medic. I don't want to just be a doctor. I want a Jedi character. So everyone was just cycling through it. I think that's what killed the game is that they found out how to do it. But then we had something called the combat upgrade which was kind of like an attempt to correct a bunch of stuff and that turned off a lot of people a bunch of people left then that's like right after i right before i left you know i think i think anakin was right you know with those younglings i think he just foresaw star wars galaxies everyone wanted to be jedi and he knew he knew he had to end it then and there (laughs) bless his heart that's Uh, our hot take for the episode anakin was right hashtag anakin was right (laughs) god get me off this podcast (laughs) I'm no longer affiliated with Scrollies. <laughs> this is this is the beginning of the end, everyone. Hey, did you hear Scrollies endorses <laughs> murder? <laughs> oh, and only in Star Wars. Master okay. Skywalker. There's too many of them. That kid was talking about Jedi in Star Wars Galaxies. Yeah. <laughs> that and that. I mean, and then World of Warcraft came out, and it. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that that had a huge effect on it as well. Everyone flocked to it, including South Park. (laughs) 
But they were such good times. Like you said, it's an experience that I treasure. I seriously, I cherish it. I cherish all the interactions I had with people. Like, because the game was set up in a way to make you meet people and and to kind of like role play, like actually role play, not just here's my avatar. He's big man with big sword. Not just number game role play, but but live and experience role play. It's it's, it's a little more my speed. I, I can get behind that. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah and like it's it's about communities uh it's about family and that's what makes it so special <laughs> whoa vin diesel what, where'd you come from <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh I, 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 yeah i i don't know where you want to go but can i tell one last story uh, I'll, I'll allow it please share okay. share your star wars galaxies uh uh experience with me okay my star wars experience i have so many god i have so many this might need a part two. I remember she was going through some rough times. And I remember we were just like fishing and we were just hanging out there talking and like chatting, like not voice chat, like chatting. She's like, Hey, I'm going through this. It's rough. And me, I was just like, that really sucks. I hate to hear that, you know? And it, it, that like, it, it was cool. Cause we had just a space to hang out in and you might think it's silly that like, Oh, fishing. It was cool. It was fun. Well, you know what they say? There's always a bigger fish. They do say that. You're not wrong. Well, this would have, this would have been right in the middle of prequels. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can right, see it. This would have been right after episode two. Yeah. Yeah. Ish around there. Um, but the, the, the last story I'll tell you. This is the last story. One of the coolest experiences. And it happened a few other times. But we, as I said, we were a rebel guild on Tatooine. And every once in a while, they would do PvP events where if you had so many faction points that you earned through missions, you could set up like bases, you could buy or ATSTs, you could buy stormtroopers and have them like patrol your area. And there was like a server wide battle for who was winning. I remember in the same thing, we were just like this little ragtag snot nosed group of rebels from Tatooine who all knew each other from uh, from Jedi Knight, Jedi Outcast. And we were recruited by this much bigger group who was then tapped for like a defense. Like there was this big assault that was going to be happening on Naboo, I think. They were like, hey, we're going to have like totally role playing. We're going to have this event. We're going to have our biggest leaders here. We're going to have Genesis of the City of Rage. We're going to have, you know, Snape, who is the leader of uh, my my personal guild. And I remember like, I don't know if he actually did go, but one of the others, I remember I got invited. There was like four of us that got invited. And so it was like this whole thing where we left from Tatooine together, flew, like, you know, we took, we went to the spaceport, flew to Naboo and, and rode out to this like place. And we were like seeing other rebels and just like, like, Oh, Hey, Oh yeah. You're going to the thing. Yeah. 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 And, and some of the groups were like, and that's what was funny to me is because I think a lot of the other groups were like, here's our uniform. We're all going to be uh, tagged as uh, like rebels because you could be incognito or not. Hmm. And they were like, we're going to wear uniforms. We're going to have our names set up. We're going to have everything set to like, I'm a, I'm a sergeant, whatever in, you know, in the rebellion. Yeah. And, and everyone, everyone was like that. Like they were repping themselves like, oh, look <laughs> at what armor we got. Look at how many people we've got. And then we show up. Again, just this ragtag group of like, oh, yokels. <laughs> and it was such a good experience. So many people showed up. And I remember this. Is there is there a better representation of the Rebel Alliance, though, than, than a bunch of yokels? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what we, I think we all felt that of like, we're kind of just like, hey, are we the main characters? Because, you know. <laughs> You're the main character of your own story. And in, in this case, uh. Star Wars Galaxies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, God. And the, the, this is the last thing. This is what happened. We eventually sent in our representative or two representatives. And the, and the rest of us were like three or four of us, whoever, however many it was. We're sitting outside the guild hall. They're inside having this meeting talking about uh, we need this many people at this time. And it's going to happen here. And, you know, setting up their strategy. And we're sitting outside just joking around, talking to people, getting to know others. When the devs of the game the devs of the game role played as princess Leia. So they had like a whole ship, like land in this grassy field in Naboo and off got like, you know, these NPCs clearly controlled by 
actual like devs in the game because they had heard about this in some way and some some developer somebody whoever controlling princess leia got off and like said some words to all of us outside of like encouragement like uh, yeah we we have to fight for the rebellion we have to you know like and oh what an experience and they they did not have to go that hard man they didn't <laughs> And and then she went inside and she came out and like people were like getting screenshots with her and like hey hey can I just like <laughs> can I pose it <laughs> yeah yeah can I do can I type in my my emote while you I'm know, standing I, next to I imagine that's what Princess Leia had to deal with on a daily basis so <laughs> very true to life very true to life <laughs> actually the senator isn't doing selfies today we're sorry <laughs> no no just just this one time oh oh yeah. oh thank you thank you <laughs> thank you. You won't find this in any history book, book, folks, but you will find this recounted from a primary source here on the Scrollies podcast. Oh, my Lord. You guys, yeah. If this, if there's any of you who this sounds cool, please tell me. Just, just, Or any of you that played, if there's some other people out there, tell me your server. Tell me what you played. I was a Zabrak, pistolier, smuggler, creature handler. We, we got a veteran right here, folks. Come on. I know there are more of you out there. Come on, turn, turn up. He's, he's He wants to talk to someone else who understands, who's yeah, been through the like experience. The good old days. Another vet of Star Wars Galaxies. I, I'm i a civilian. I'm just looking on. I'm just nodding along. Yeah, yeah, but I don't understand. I don't understand what it was like to go through Naboo. <laughs> oh, man. I, Yeah, that's it. I'm not going to gush anymore. Thank you for letting me talk about it, Squawk Cobbler absolutely absolutely and you know hey we might do a part two i'm sure there are many more stories left yet to tell uh maybe i'll even share uh my favorite gaming experience but for now we'll, we'll keep that close to the chest for sure i'm excited for that um anybody out there let me know and hey there's emulators right now i might be joining some soon so be kind <laughs> all right well i think we're gonna wrap it up there right great um as always ratnado of twitch.tv slash team ratnado accompanied by squat cobbler of the scrollies podcast thank you so much for listening appreciate yeah. it you guys rock you guys keep us going we had a lot of uh support uh the other week when sam came on and we appreciate all of you for listening to that we're hoping to have a lot more guests on soon so thank you and we'll catch you on the next one see ya bye